Now I would like to introduce you uh, Mrs. Kyriaki Sonidou, clinical lead in primary care and president of the Hellenic Medical Society of the UK. Mrs. Sonidou, we hear you. Thank you. Distinguished guests, distinguished organizer, dear Governor Vatica, thank you so much for being here with you today. It's a privilege and an honor, but a special thanks to Dr. Konstantinos Pantos because thanks to him here with you today. Professor Koriu, she professor Vudam in Vatsat Medicina, La Facultatea Carol Davilad in Bucharest. What che coincidenza placuta si deosebita. What I've just said is that I studied medicine in Bucharest, Romania, and I trained in Greece, and then my subspecialties and the rest of my professional development was here in the UK where I lived the last 13 years. Today, very briefly, within the next 10 minutes or so, I will share with you some thoughts about who Hippocrates was, who we all know that, but mainly I will focus a little bit on the Hippocratic Oath and the impact in the Western medicine and the practice in the UK. So Hippocrates was the fourth century Greek physician who proclaimed 25 centuries ago to help or at least to do no harm. This expression was passed on to Galen, to Thomas Sydenham, to Florence Nightingale. He was not only an inspiring physician and teacher of the medical school, of course, which he also founded. He was not only the most famous doctor of his time. He's the person who is still considered by many to be the father of medicine. He did something that nobody else had done before. He systematically wrote down and passed on to the future generations his observations, his teachings, his theories ethics and regimes for health and illness. He was part of the golden age of Greece, but most important, he composed the Hippocratic Oath and such was the influence of it until the day of today, many graduate doctors around the world swear it just before they start practicing medicine. He insisted on careful observation and keeping notes. He believed in the interaction of the nature, the patient and the physician, which determined the outcome of an illness. By virtue of his knowledge and skill, a physician was presumed to act as a benevolent authority in both moral and technical matters. He was to decide what was the best for his patients and to make the decisions on the basis of competence. Medicine was not considered a profession at his, times, at his time, not until several hundred years later. But the Hippocratic writings set up the transformation of medicine as a profession in which as Edmund Pellegrino and David Thomas Mach have pointed out, the nature of medicine imposes on the physician specific obligations towards his patients and his colleagues. Clinical observation, learning from the examples, has become the basis of the concept of medicine as a profession in which every single practitioner is potentially an active learner or and a researcher. He believed that humanity worked within the confines of nature and must collaborate with it to achieve best health and avoid disease. He believed that each person should be treated with dignity. His, the physician's art, it is in his technique, in his careful observation, in his clear thoughts, his useful interventions without doing any harm. The dictum as to diseases make a habit of two things, to help or at least to do no harm, is central to the ethos, that amazing Greek word that emerges from the Hippocratic writings and formed the basis of the physician and patient relationship. The life is short, the art long, the right time but an instant, the trial precarious, the crisis grievous. That's from his first aphorism. It is necessary for the physician to provide not only the needed treatment, but to provide for the patient himself and beside him and for his outside affairs. Dickinson Richards took this aphorism to encapsulate the core philosophy of the Hippocratic medicine. This aphorism is believed by many to be Hippocrates' own words, and it's a poetic description of the context of the professional life devoted to medicine, which has shaped the culture of the physicianhood. I, po I point in my next slide a summary of a few of the main principles of the Hippocratic Oath. 
The Hippocratic Oath is a solemn promise of solidarity with teachers and other physicians, of beneficence and not maleficence towards patients, not to assist suicide or abortion, to leave surgery to surgeons, not to harm, especially not to seduce your patients, and to maintain confidentiality. Five principles of the Hippocratic Oath remain valid the last 25 centuries. Competence, caring, commitment. The Oath supports the primary obligation to competence based on continued learning. Another fundamental recognition in the Oath is the responsibility to respect our patient's secret and information, what we call privacy and confidentiality, and their dependence and vulnerability. And if we move in our modern times, and specifically in the UK, the classical Hippocratic Oath has been translated and interpreted. It described the basic ethics of the medical practice and laid down a moral code of conduct for doctors. However, modern versions have been proposed, we still use many of the basic principles of the original. Specifically in the UK, the British Medical Association drafted a new Hippocratic Oath for consideration by the World Medical Association back in 1997, but it was not accepted. And until the day of today, there is still no one single modern accepted version. In some medical schools, the Declaration of Geneva Physicians Oath is still used, and in some institutions, they have individualized oaths. Here in the UK, you all know about general, the General Medical Council, and what is most published and advertised by them is good medical practice. We hear about it, we are trained about it almost every day. The GMC is charged with the supervision of the conduct of the medical profession, which includes educational standards, ethics, and behavior. The GMC advises doctors on the standards expected of them in the form of the document published as good medical practice, and it discusses the duties of a doctor registered with them. And this covers most of the principles of the original Hippocratic Oath. And I will share with you next the four domains which reflect on the Hippocratic Oath. The first domain is knowledge, skills, and performance. Make the care of your patients your first concern. Provide a good standard of practice and care. Develop and maintain your professional performance. Apply knowledge and experience to practice. Recognize and work within your limits of competence. And record your work clearly, accurately, and legibly. The second domain is about safety and quality. Contribute to and comply with the system to protect your patients. Respond to risks to safety. Protect your patients and colleagues from any risks posed by your health. The third domain is communication, partnership, and teamwork. Communicate effectively. Work collaboratively with your colleagues to maintain and improve your patient's care. Teaching, training, supporting, assessing. Continuity and coordination of care. Establish and maintain partnerships with your patients. Listen and respond to their concerns and their questions. Give them the information they want or they need or they ask, but in a way they can understand you. Respect your patient's rights to make decisions with you about their treatment and their care. And support your patients in caring for themselves to improve and maintain a good health. The fourth domain is about maintaining trust. Show respect to your patients. Respect their dignity, treat them politely and considerately, Respect the right to confidentiality. Treat your patients and your colleagues fairly without any kind of discrimination. Act with honesty and integrity. Never abuse your patient's trust in you, but most important, never abuse the public's trust in the medical profession. And finally, between the Hippocratic Oath and the modern times and our era and the Western medicine, the Hippocratic Oath binds new physicians to ethos and profession of medicine. The Western tradition of scientific medicine traces its root to the Hippocratic corpus. The Hippocratic influences are still bearing on the contemporary medicine in the West. The need of stamina, physical and mental, the lifelong commitment on the part of a physician seems to be central implications since Hippocrates' first aphorism. 
The oath reflects assumptions about the physician as a moral person, but not, not only in specific medical prohibitions, but also in setting out a code of personal conduct. We would be less than candid if we don't point out how many, almost each one of these ideas and principles have been challenged within our, within our democratic and entrepreneurial societies in ways that seem both constructive and destructive. We read on the papers, we hear on the TV, almost on daily basis about physicians who have broken their oath or policies which run counter to the oath. The truth is, we are confronted by rapid changes and we have the responsibility to assess our fundamental values and to preserve those elements that remain cogent, practicable and right. The realities of the modern world preclude such a complete involvement of a physician in the lives of their patients and their families. Hippocrates' conception of broad physician support of the patient aimed at helping defeat the illness, to understand the whole person, what ourselves primary care physicians call holistic approach as we seek to cure or ameliorate the effects of the disease. And finally, as our society becomes culturally more and more diverse, we look forward to learning of other traditions and from other traditions to expand our understanding of what it means to be a part of the healing profession. Thank you so much for your attention. Σας ευχαριστώ για την προσοχή σας. Μουλτσουμές φρουμός πέντρου ατένσια του Μναβάστρα. Thank you very much uh, for mentioning so um, the uh, so, so detailed uh, Hippocratic oath and uh, uh, its value till nowadays. It is true that um, uh, despite the variety of cultures and civilizations and uh, despite uh, the long passage of time the principles of the Hippocratic Oath uh, stand firmly till nowadays. So thank you very much for all that uh, mentioned today.